Well, here we are again. It's Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. We are in chapter 2 of the book of Philippians in uh, the New Testament, written uh, by Paul and Timothy to the little place called Philippi, to a little church that was on fire for the Lord, that were following the Lord. And by the way, remember, these were hard times. That they, These were times when uh, the uh, rebellion of uh, coming from Judaism to Christianity was great and in that day that the, the uh, kings of the earth did not like somebody else coming up and saying I am going to follow another Lord a Lord Jesus Christ I'm not so interested in following the words you say king as I am the king of heaven and God and the kings were uh, feeling like they were left out and the minute they felt left out uh, they wanted people to worship them and not somebody else so let's remember that we're in a time when it was a transition coming about it said verse 16 said holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain neither labored in vain I do not want to labor in vain, and I don't want to run in vain. I want to run in the Lord Jesus Christ, and not in vain. Therefore, my brothers, I pray that these things right here, these tidbits from the Word, will be used by somebody one day. Do you know, if I did this for, for 20 years, and one soul, clicked on and got saved through tidbits from the word it would be worth it all it would be worth it all getting up in the morning I love to get up I love the Lord to wake me up in the morning early and commune with me God communes with me early in the morning he gives me the power I have to overcome the flesh how do you overcome the flesh you be strong in the spirit and not weak in the spirit. The flesh wasn't willing. <laughs> the flesh is never willing. The flesh always says, well, I could just close my eyes and get a couple more hours of sleep. You think so, huh? You close your eyes, you'll still be awake at 6 o'clock and you'll be, have wasted three hours of your time that you could have done what you were supposed to do if God called you to do something. If God wakes you up at 3 or 4 in the morning, there must be a reason. If he wakes you up, there's a reason. If you don't know what it is, get dressed. Get in your car. Go down to the 24-hour filling station. Get a dollar's worth of gas. And talk to somebody at the pump. And give him a track and witness Go inside. Be nice and polite to the girl or the man. Witness. Give them a try. Go to the restroom. Whether you have to go to the restroom or not. Put a track or two on the sink. Come back out. Put a track or two on the pump. And go home. Get back in bed. And go to sleep. And sleep for two or three more hours in contentment. Hey, sweet is the sleep of the man who is obedient. Sweet is the sleep of a man who is obedient. It won't be long now. I'll be venturing back to the bed and I'll go get in the bed for a couple hours and I'll sleep like a log and I'll wake back up and go about my work day and my business day and do what God would have me do. Redeeming the time Redeeming the time. This is what our purpose in life is, is to redeem the time. He said here, Yea, and if I be offended, off, excuse me, upon the uh, sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. Now let me read verse 17 again. Yea, and if I be offered 
upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice in you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. <coughs> a sacrificial life is a life given to others that you may rejoice with others over the things that God is doing. Verse 19, But I trust in the Lord Jesus. Send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. Timothy was a man who cared for the state of the church at Philippi. And Paul was going to send him over there, and he, he tells them a little later here to accept them, as Timothy, as himself, and to listen to him because he is interested in their growing properly. For all seek their own, not the things which I Jesus Christ. Uh oh, Paul saw a little touch of a little failure in the church. And that touch of failure was that some, and he says all, have not learned yet how to be benevolent to each other more than themselves. And they all seek themselves. But ye know the proof of him that is a son with the Father, he hath served with me in the gospel. Him, therefore, I hope to send presently, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also may myself shall come shortly. Now, we do not know, nor is it recorded, but probably Paul could at this point have been still in shackles, still in the prison house, still talking to Timothy through the bars, still speaking to Timothy on the outside of the prison wall while he's on the inside of the prison wall, and Timothy is pinning down as being the scribe and pinning down the words that Paul is saying. Yet Timothy likewise is a minister also, and he may have been a free man while Paul was a bond man, and Timothy was outside of the situation, yet was able. So Paul said here, I don't know yet exactly how, what's going to happen to me, and right now I trust that, that Timothy is helping me to get this letter out so that it can go to you. And Timothy's bringing me the news from Philippi so I can hear it and be rejoiced with you and my joy be full, even though I'm in the prison. And verse 25, he said, Yet I suppose it necessary to send to Ephrodite, my brother, a companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger. And he that ministered to my wants. What is he saying? He's saying, here I have a man that came from you. His name was Aphrodite. And he brought some things for my that I wanted. Like, for instance, a parchment. And a quill. And a, and a jacket. And some things that he brought. He brought things that were needful for me to be able to give you this letter. Send you this letter. For he longed after you all, and was full of heaviness, because that he had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick, nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrowed upon sorrow. Now, here's a guy, Paul, was in a sorrowful place. And he loved this Aphrodite guy. And he said, I would have had to sorrow too as you. I would have had to go into a sorrow time and had sorrow upon sorrow. Verse 28, 
I sent him therefore the more carefully that when you see him again you may rejoice and that I may be the less sorrowful. Rejoice, receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and whole sedge in repetition reputation because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me there was a little bit of a lack of service from Philippi to Paul but this man Aphrodite saw it and he fulfilled the need and while he was doing it, he himself got sick because of a failure of the whole church at Philippi. They had a failure in this sense that they liked to see. Here was a man that perhaps was starving to death. Here's a man that perhaps had no water. Here's a man that had a lack of something that could have been supplied to him by the body of believers, and yet they missed it. And he got sick, nearly unto death, because of the failure of the body of believers there. Do we have people in our midst because of the failure of our body of believers that are sick or were doing without? or have a need and nobody has seemed to pick up on it. We need to be very careful, my friend, and keep our eyes open for others that others may not lack and that we don't allow somebody to get sick because of our lack of responsibility and not take care of the widows and the offerings, orphans and those like Aphrodite is here who carried Paul. No, I, we do not know what his nearly sick unto death was, but we do know it was caused by the lack of somebody else's uh, duty. And so therefore, uh, and Paul himself says this, that we need to straighten up and regard these things so we don't fail. And then, well, this is Brother Peter. I have got to go for now. And we'll be with you again. Uh, this, two, four, six, seven. this will be my eighth excerpt coming out on the book of Philippians. And we will be in chapter 3 on the next excerpt.